Hang in there, Earth. Sharon Hornell from here. Welcome to day 1,314 of What She Up To Now. Documenting the journey as I transition from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business and a little bit of back and forth in 2020 and 2021 and I'm sure beyond. Why? Because once you have your feet in brick and mortar businesses, it's really hard to, in your heart, I guess, it's really hard to just disconnect and not do that at all anymore. And COVID-19, one of the lessons it taught me is the importance, and I believed it for a long time, of having control over certain things in our local communities, in our area, control over our food sources, control over uh, the things that we can and we need to survive. Um, I think that a lot of uh, mistakes we've made as a world and as a, the globalization of the world is farming out a lot of our manufacturing and a lot of the, the you know our energy and things that we need to continue to maintain control of in our own country that's as long as we have our own country that is so today we were talking about it was interesting because earth came up and the earth poem and I'm like what the heck's an earth poem um, for our annual challenge are all about you do one thing every day that centers you 365 day challenge this year it goes along with the little book do one thing every day that centers you and today it was about the poetry of the earth is never dead I'm like what does that even mean do you ever read something and you're like and I used to read a lot of stuff like that I went to engineering school and so you know some of the the science and physics and math and chemistry courses that I took you you didn't just it wasn't light reading it wasn't like reading a novel you didn't just read it and, and say okay well that was good that was entertaining what did that mean to me it was okay read a paragraph think about what the paragraph means do some formulas you know give some examples so I'm not I'm used to asking myself well what does that mean when I read something but it's interesting when I'm doing something like a challenge like this I don't expect to have to think so hard about well what does that even mean to me and even when it's the let me get a magnifying glass even when it says Earth's poem for me today, I'm still like, well, well how am I going to figure that out? What's it going to, what's it mean? Well, it's raining today, so maybe rain means that it needs a shower. The world needs a shower. Everything needs to clean up its act, you know, including me. We all have ways to improve and clean up the things that we're doing. So I don't know. It's what I'll have to think about a little bit before I respond. I haven't done it yet. I do it. You can see I do do my homework, though. I do, I do do it. I do the challenge right along with you because I'm like, if it's worth doing, if it's worth talking about, why would I not do it? And the whole purpose of the annual challenge is to pick something and work on it just a little bit every day, just one little thing a day and see the impact that it has over the course of 365 days. Just think how your life would be if you did 10 push-ups every day for 365 days. Would your arms be stronger? Would you be more fit? Would you have more stamina? Absolutely. And could probably almost anyone, even me, even though I've never tried to do it, do 10 push-ups every day for a year? Probably. But it's just a little thing. How long would it take to do 10 push-ups? I don't know. A minute? Maybe two minutes? Maybe three if you're, you know, if you're really struggling. But over the course of the year, I bet maybe it starts out as three or five minutes at the beginning of the year. But by the end of the year, you could probably pump out 10 push-ups in, in, you know, less than a minute in like 30 seconds or something. So the whole purpose is to make things easier to achieve a goal and objective to improve something in our lives by breaking it down into just little bitty single daily actions little things every day so today is i gotta think about i'm like okay what does that mean what's the earth poem never dies what's maybe because there's okay I, i'm not going to go off on it but i i'm already starting to think about it so there's a lot that we can learn from the earth about nature and cycles and ebbs and flows and change and and uh, lots of things can't believe I couldn't even think of something I guess it was early so that was our annual challenge our supersize your business on my supersize your business page for people that want to grow and build their business I have a, a group and a page and on that we do and I started doing it when I was moving it's been a couple years ago now uh, as a as a way to keep in touch with the group and you know kind of like a word of a day stimulate thinking because what's important isn't what we hear and what we see, it's what we think about and how we interpret what we hear and what we see and how we're gonna use that to grow and build and supersize our business and how we're gonna use it to live our life. And so I started doing idioms. I started doing an idiom a day. I had found a book when I was cleaning and packing up the house from my kids. I'd gotten it for them 
probably in junior high. It was a scholastic book of over 600 idioms. And I thought, well, this will keep me throughout the move. I can just randomly pick an idiom a day, talk about what it means, where it came from, and then share how you can use that to build and grow your business. And after I moved, it, it turned out that I kind of got hooked on doing it because it was like a fun little improv challenge every day to figure out, well, what does this mean to me and how can I apply it to building and growing my business? And I've actually had different businesses during this time period. So I've gotten the opportunity to think about, well, how would I apply it to my manufacturing business? How would I apply it to an online business? How would I apply it to a coaching business? How would I apply it to different industries? And today's was hang in there. And I borrowed I was talking to my son-in-law when I was, was looking up the, the meaning of the idiom, and he's got this hat with a little new thing from Creature, which I think it's a skateboarding brand, skateboarding company. I'd have to ask him. But it's got a little uh, noose and hang in there saying, and so I thought that was kind of perfect for today's idiom. Now, that idiom was actually made famous by the cat posters by Victor Baldwin, who probably got the idea from a French inventor named I can't pronounce uh, but he had a cat named croissant and for eight hours he had the cat hanging on a silk cord or silk scarf and was doing pictures or posters and some experiments with it that became uh, famous and then you know people seem to love cats on social media so when posters came out a guy by the name of Victor Baldwin did the original cat hanging on the bamboo the piece of bamboo he did a poster of that that said hang in there or hang in there baby I can't remember and that since then he sued a lot of people for copyright infringement because he said that there were at least 10 million unauthorized versions of that poster the cat and the hang in there and a cat in different uh, hanging in different situations or over bars and things uh, knockoffs of his poster idea so not sure how that worked out for him, all the litigation and things, but, uh, uh, and I, I won't even talk about litigation and how that it, it, it ties into business and things, but I thought it was really interesting. Then I, I looked into and found, well, what do you do when you're facing a difficult situation? How do you hang in there? I found a bunch of lists and a bunch of tips that I shared with the people in that group. Probably went too long. Haven't processed that video yet, but uh, there's, there's so much advice. and. And all of us have had the opportunity to practice hanging in there during COVID-19. And even as COVID-19 is changing and morphing, uh, we've had to determine and decide how are we going to continue to live our lives. We're all personally responsible for ourselves. And it's up to each of us individually to say, what do I need to do to keep myself and the people I love and care about safe? Do I need to wear a mask? Do I need to continue to... Uh, distance myself from other people. It depends on our current situation. Some of us have health challenges that mean we should be more careful than other people, you know, and then we could go into all the other aspects of that topic and any other topic. Uh, but how do we hang in there? What do we do to keep moving forward, keep our life going in the direction we want it to go uh, when we're faced with difficult times and challenges? Now, COVID-19 was definitely not the first challenge or change that any of us have had to face it's just that we're all facing it simultaneously so it makes a great reference point a great topic of discussion uh, it everybody has you know dealt with COVID-19 differently and will continue to as it continues to be made an issue uh, and you know given its political charge chances are it's not going to go away anytime soon there's too much uh, money and power and momentum behind it for it to end as a crisis they're going to drag it out and make it a crisis as long as humanly possible no matter what impact it has on humanity because that's not people's intent with respect to COVID-19 and that I find very very sad all right so that's what I'm working on that's what I'm gonna go work on I really really missed my granddaughter this week I'm not gonna lie it was her first week of school and I miss her energy I miss her drive I miss the structure that it adds to my day in life I have to be much more structured when I'm hanging out with her and uh so I'm not going to lie, I miss her little energy. All right, that's it. If I can help you in any way, ask, you know, 27 different industries offline, 47 years running my own businesses as well as over a quarter century in corporate America. So I tried some stuff, tried, tried it. Some of it's worked swimmingly. Some of it has sunk like a very heavy boulder. Uh, but that's, that's the nature of life is us experiencing things, figuring it out, making things our own and uh, then sharing that experience with other people. So if you need help, if you're struggling with something and you don't have anybody to ask, 
ask me, hit me up. I might not know the exact answer for you, but I guarantee between the two of us, within five minutes, we will have you moving in the direction that you wanna go, uh, absolutely positively, because you don't need to know all the way to get to where you wanna go, you just need to know the next step and be willing to take that next step. Have an awesome day, if I can help you anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow just to fill you in on what's working, what's not, and uh, maybe start sharing some of the other projects that I'm working on. Have an amazing day.